Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about something very interesting, biohacking. In the Silicon Valley, as well as worldwide, all of the guys who are raising money are talking about biohacking and are talking about it as if it's a lifestyle. But while billionaire CEOs swear by ice baths and microdosing and such pseudoscience, is it just that or is there something there which we need to know about? Let's talk about it on the channel. What's biohacking? And how did that term come about? Biohacking, in short, is a way of using a combination of science and perhaps technology to upgrade your body, mind, and soul. It ranges from simple hacks like diet and exercise tweaks to more extreme interventions like even inserting chips in your body or brain. Yeah, you heard me right. But let's talk about them and break them down. There's simple things like nutritional biohacking. And that includes things like keto diets, intermittent fasting, bulletproof coffee, where you have medium chain triglycerides and other things, which there is some science on. And while it's not foolproof and compared to other types of diets will work as well as anything else. And then there's things which are more interesting and perhaps a little more sci-fi like tech-based biohacking, which includes wearables, smart drugs, and brain stimulation. By no means am I advocating using any of these things, and we're really describing them for your benefit. You can read more in the description below. So don't think for a second that me talking about it is giving you a stamp of approval. Just a disclaimer for your benefit. But let's talk about one more variety of biohacking, and that's genetic biohacking. With the advent of CRISPR, where you can actually modify DNA, we are actually using it to improve things like cancer. And in some cases with CRISPR, we develop vaccines, mRNA vaccines, much faster than they would have normally done. So technically speaking, that is a form of biohacking. So what are the popular biohacking trends and what's the science behind it? We're gonna go through a few of them and it's not exhaustive by any means. Let's talk about one type of biohacking called cold therapy. It's not a new therapy by any means. And we've been using it to some degree in sports where it's thought to reduce inflammation, ice baths, which are thought to boost metabolism. Do they increase blood circulation and improve muscle recovery? There are some studies to suggest that. Another type of biohacking is nootropics, which are smart drugs. Remember that sci-fi series, which talked about the one drug that could make you smart and make you able to think faster and boost that? Well, there are some drugs now which claim to boost focus and memory. And honestly, there's another class of drugs which are using like Aricept, Namenda, and things like that for uh, ailments where people are losing memory in the way of dementia, specifically in the case of Alzheimer's as well as in other things. Next, there's red light therapy, which is used for different types of skin health and muscle recovery, as well as hair loss. And we'll leave a link in, that, in my uh, description so you can read more about that. Next, another type of biohack is the gut microbiome, which is gaining huge amounts of popularity. And in specific with diets that claim to alter gut bacteria uh, for better health. Finally, there's gene editing. We talked a little bit about CRISPR, but the most controversial aspect of this is using gene editing to cure diseases. And I don't think it's controversial at all. In the case of sickle cell, for instance, they can edit genes and then have it go in there, but this is not a new therapy in that in cases where they're doing bone marrow transplants, they're actually removing the unhealthy things and putting stem cells in and regenerating your whole supply so that you don't have that line of cancer cells. So it's not a new topic, it's just that we think we can do better and make you stronger, faster, better in what you do. I think science will let that out. There's risk to everything you do, and this is no different. You can overuse supplements. You can, in extreme cases, fast where it can be risky. You can over-optimize where you're tracking sleep, tracking your food, tracking your metabolism, which can then lead to anxiety. So this is a form of biohacking where you actually have too much data and you don't know what to do with it. Secondly, unregulated experimentation vis-a-vis -vis some of the folks who have come through India lately, which I won't name, who have talked about anecdotal experiments of one and thrown everything at the roof to see what sticks, really aren't science to me. 
and I'm gonna be very firm on that, in that each one of the individual steps might work, but in helping you do longevity, the real question is which one of these things contributed to it. We won't know because there's too many variables in the equation. Moreover, you can have significant byproducts of this later in the way of cells which outgrow their natural lifespan vis-a-vis -vis malignancies and things like that, which we won't learn for years. The ethical debate then is that if we hack human biology, where do we draw the line? Will biohacking create a genetic elite who can afford to upgrade themselves, like something out of a sci-fi movie where they just buy skins and they put new chips in and basically live forever? Longevity is what we're all after. Look, it isn't a new thing. I talked about it in another episode where Ponce de Leon in Florida was looking for the fountain of youth. But the idea is, what is it like to age gracefully, number one? And number two, where do we draw the line on what things we should fix versus what things are natural? My view is that if something is harming you and there's something we can do to change that, I think that's a situation where quote unquote biohacking may be appropriate. But the bottom line is that we gotta be careful about this and not get you into trouble in the first place. That may be the better state of affairs. Finally, which hacks are worth trying and are science-based, like sleep tracking, and which ones are just hype? and something you'll see on someone's Instagram page and someone's marketing binge where they're trying to sell you something. We need to be safe about this and we need to have no conflict of interest. And that's what we propose that this should be for everyone. It shouldn't just be for the elite. It shouldn't just be for people who can afford it. I think ultimately it needs to be for all of us. At the same time, there's gonna be some things even now which you can do if you have money and things you can't do if you don't have money. So we gotta decide what's that boundary. What do you think about this? And you know, many of my vlogs are created to really start a discussion and trends will come and go, but good health is built on fundamentals. Instead of chasing the fads, focus on sustainable evidence-based data and try to create habits which are sustainable for your whole entire life. And in doing that, you'll have the health for yourself and everyone around you. Because my goal is to get you to 100 or beyond with me. And that's why I did everything I did. Tell me if you agree in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And like always, hit the like button if you like what we're saying. Hit the subscribe button to get more of these kind of things we're talking about. And then finally, share this with a friend so that they'll be part of the discussion and part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Thanks for joining us and I'll see you in the next episode.